Chief Medical Officer Sebastian Stone turned down a pregnant girl without insurance when she arrived to the hospital eight months into her pregnancy. However, Sebastian had yet to learn the repercussions of his choice, and he wouldn't know that until the pregnant teen's actual identity was revealed to him. Sebastian realizes he has made a terrible mistake. The sight of 19-year-old Noah shocked Dr. Sebastian, who had not expected to see her again. After he had sent her away more than a month before, he had all but given up hope of ever seeing her again. Since she had just given birth, her motives in approaching him were unclear. This time, Noah wasn't on her alone. Another person entered Sebastian's office just behind her, someone he didn't identify at first glance, but who seemed oddly familiar. He was confused at first, but then he grasped the situation immediately. By the time Noah presented herself to Sebastian, he had no doubts. He started crying right away, saying, I am so, so sorry who exactly was Noah, exactly who was the mystery guy who had just joined her, and why was Sebastian now repentant for his behavior? When Dr. Sebastian first began working at the hospital, he was a different guy. He had become jaded and grumpy over the years, and his patients were beginning to feel the effects. Noah has good patient ratings, and the rest of the workforce was eager to take corrective measures. The hospital discussed terminating him in a meeting. Easy to say, but hard to accomplish, as one of the nurses put it. After 35 years, he still hasn't left. We can't simply tell him to poof and go since he has more life experience than any of us. The nurse was correct, as the rest of the team eventually concluded at the meeting. There are a number of reasons why Sebastian wouldn't give up his job willingly. A head physician position was created for Sebastian around eight years ago. In addition to all the administrative duties, he was responsible for overseeing the hospital's whole staff of medical professionals. That's why he had so much on his plate. The fact that he insisted on visiting patients often, however, meant that his medical knowledge was always up to date. Sebastian felt that his ability to interact with patients on a daily basis helped him in his role as head physician. Sebastian's patients, however, virtually invariably get stuck with an angry, unethical doctor because of his recent behavioral shift. One of these unfortunate people was a pregnant teenager named Noah, but there was something off about her. This young lady just showed up at the emergency room. Even though she was eight months along in her pregnancy, the team had no record of her. One of the nurses looked at the machine and commented, Yes. This is ridiculous. However, we will speak with her and gather data. When they made contact with her, the crew became skeptical. For the duration of their care, Noah either refused or was unable to respond to the physicians' and nurses' questions and inquiries. The group had a few hypotheses on what may be causing such type of behavior. It was speculated by the medical staff that Noah, who was sleeping on the streets, may also be addicted to substances. One of the physicians suggested screening her to see whether this was the case. Every substance was tested but the findings came back negative. In spite of this, the team didn't completely dismiss the idea, a stance they would come to learn was fatally flawed. As a result of considering the possibility that the young lady was in trouble, they made the decision to help her out. One of the hospital's regulations was used. Each month, a certain amount of money is put aside for homeless persons in need. For their part, they planned to give Noah a portion of the funds. However, there was a one problem. It was necessary to get permission to utilize the money they requested. Dr. Sebastian, the head physician, had to provide his stamp of approval. He used to be generous with the money, but due to Sebastian's shift in attitude, he now only seldom gives it to those in need. He reroutes it to other locations. Given Sebastian's stance, the group resolved to lobby him into allocating the money to Noah, who would be 19 at the time. In his office, medical professionals argued that the young lady needed the money even more now that she was pregnant. However, the top doctor paid them little mind. He insisted that under no circumstances should he assist Noah with the money. Sebastian finally spoke what was on his mind after all the bickering on the squad. The girl brought this on herself by going to that place, he said fiercely. In a sudden burst of anger, he said that the parents, not the clinic, should shoulder the cost of her medical care. In Sebastian's opinion, the group was just trying to pamper the girl, and he argued that hospitals don't hand out cash donations. No one else in the medical staff took it well. A nurse said under her breath, This is ridiculous. The group stormed out of the office in anger to vent over Sebastian's choice. They went back to his room and him an ultimatum after that. It's okay, one of the doctors replied. We won't spend money on her. But it's not something we can tell her. In other words, you'll be the one to break the news to her. Sebastian answered, sure without remorse. He strode inside Noah's bedroom and saw the young lady sitting there, looking all puppy-like. Of course he didn't hesitate to tell her she wouldn't get anything, even though anybody else would have felt sorry for her. Moreover, he shared some additional information with her. When Noah refused to leave, the doctor threatened to contact the police. In addition, he told her, if you want my counsel, seek for your parents or for the guy who made you end up like this, indicating her growing tummy. It's them, not me, who should be assisting you. 
Noah, needless to say, was really sad about it. Nevertheless, she accepted the doctor's verdict and stood to go. Sebastian was in the hall delivering a haughty speech about how he always took the tough choices and how the team needed to learn from him when she was retrieving her things. A nurse, meantime, quietly entered Noah's chamber. The nurse handed Noah a message as she watched her leave the room. Walking out of the hospital, Noah paused to read the letter, which included the nurse's contact information and some encouraging remarks. The message said, I want to assist you anyway I can. It was evidence of the nurse's compassion for the victim. Much of Sebastian's crew had already been lost at that point. However, the current scenario with Noah has pushed everything to the breaking point. The workers got together and deliberated on a plan of action. They made a hasty, radical judgment as a group. The group presented their case to the hospital's board of directors. They were demanding that Sebastian be sacked from his job at the hospital. Unfortunately for the crew, their wishes were not going to be honored. One of the directors commented, Sebastian did properly. Noah's exile was probably for the best. The workforce was in for some disheartening news. The board said that they were unable to do a proper background check on Noah because she refused to provide the requested information. In other words, Sebastian avoided potential legal trouble for the medical center. Unfortunately, they had to make the tough choice not to contribute to her rent or utility payments. This was rather bad news, especially considering how close the due date was. In such a short amount of time, where would they even begin looking for the appropriate resource to help Noah? Their disappointment was plain to see. The nurse who gave Noah the letter, Julia, was furious when she saw what had happened. To do nothing to aid the kid was against her morals. Julia's unease with the scenario was palpable. She discussed it with the others in her office. While everyone agreed with her, Julia's enthusiasm stood out. She felt so strongly about Sebastian's callous statement and choice that she said she was contemplating confronting him. But they all warned her against making that choice. A disagreement might get her fired. They choose to be more efficient instead. They discussed several strategies for assisting the troubled adolescent. However, they would have to locate her first. There was, in Julia's opinion, a pressing need to provide the young girl the assistance she need. She made up her mind to begin her search at homeless sanctuaries. As she hurried to her vehicle, her thoughts were already set on beginning the hunt for Noah. Her attention was drawn to a person in the glass. As she pulled out of the parking lot, she quickly realized it was Sebastian. She sent him an accusatory glance. A thought occurred to Julia as she drove to the homeless shelter. During the assessment, she recalled what Noah had told her. It was brief, but it had left a lasting impression on her. She had little interest in Sebastian, but Julia did want to know how Noah had gotten his name. Perhaps the adolescent wasn't homeless after all. Julia still wanted to be certain, so she chose to remain on her goal. She decided to visit the shelter, but when she got there, her worst fears were realized. Worry began to rise in Julia as she thought about where else she may look for the girl without any identifying information. Julia drove across town hunting for Noah, but with very little success. She began her search in the medical center and worked her way toward the city limits. Still, nobody had ever heard of an adolescent pregnancy matching the girl's description. To put it bluntly, Julia was quickly running out of options. Initially, Julia had looked in low-income areas, where she thought the little girl would be living or hiding. Julia breathed with relief as she pulled onto the first street. There on the front porch of one of the homes was the little girl she had been hunting for. Next to her stood a young guy. Might it be the baby's father? Julia was startled but happy to have discovered the small child after looking so earnestly for her. She parked her vehicle and made her way towards the people on the porch. When Noah finally glanced up and saw that it was Julia, the little child immediately started crying. She felt rejected by Sebastian since he wouldn't aid her. Julia and the young guy tried their utmost to soothe Noah who appeared inconsolable at the citation. When Julia had succeeded in calming Noah down, she told her that the other staff members at the hospital were anxious to assist her. When she asked Noah whether she'd read the letter she'd given her, Noah said she hadn't. Noah brushed the tears from her eyes. Addresses were hastily written on the scrap of paper. She looked up at Julia with a puzzled expression. To aid Noah, they were going to take her to a pregnancy clinic and Julia gave Noah the location, the type of assistance that would be much too pricey in the hospital. Noah scowled. Her partner would not be able to pay it. Yes, Julia acknowledged. She was aware of how challenging things were. According to her, if she provided a few more details, the hospital would be prepared to assist her in paying the costs. Noah resisted by shaking her body since this was the very last thing she expected to hear. Julia was taken aback by the young lady's attitude and puzzled about the source of her fear. Noah declined to respond and her partner looked to be just as hesitant, claiming that it was a delicate matter for them, and they would prefer not. Something else would have to be done. Julia agreed that a meeting with her co-workers was necessary. This young pair was clearly not going anywhere. 
Julia phoned her colleagues to address the matter. They would have to come up with a new strategy if Noah persisted on not telling her. The thought of abandoning Noah to give birth by herself was too terrifying for Julia. The adolescent girl was helpless since she lacked the means to provide for herself, and certainly not a good environment to have a baby. One of the staff members had an excellent suggestion. She offered that Julia pay and deliver the information, while Noah could turn in the information later. This would remove the problem of initiating the procedure to collect the money and also offer Noah ample time to submit the information once she was she was ready. Everyone was thrilled. Noah broke into tears. Just a few weeks later, Noah had birth. In only a few short hours, the baby was finally here. Happily, it appeared like everything worked out okay. Unfortunately, Julia was on call that evening and unable to visit the ward. The baby's father, Harry, inspired Noah to give him that name. The month mark has passed since Noah gave birth to Harry. She was thankful to the medical workers and thought it was a wonderful opportunity in time to introduce them to her partner and infant. After their previous exchange, she was still a bit unsettled with the prospect of bumping into Sebastian. Her lover, though, vowed to always be there for her. When they got at the hospital, they made their way to the maternity ward. They were strolling across the floor towards the nurse's station when Noah noticed Sebastian in the distance. Oh no. She swiftly drew her feet back to escape as another familiar face noticed her. Julia was the one holding out her hand for Noah to come over. Noah was interrupted in mid-thought by the entrance of a newcomer before Julia could get a word in edgewise. Sebastian had seen her and come to find her. He strolled over to her and started peppering her with questions. Inquiring minds wanted to know the delivery room details, but Noah was much too worried. Would she have to divulge the reality of her identity? It was evident that Sebastian did not recognize her. How could he? More importantly, if he had, he surely would have said something by now. Her guy gave Noah a glance. He knew the tension was too high and that she would have to speak out soon. Though he tried his best, it was already too late to stop her. As Noah pressed her lips together for a second, it was clear that she needed to get something out. The truth was finally out of her mouth. It turned out that she was Sebastian's niece. Julia and Sebastian looked at the young people with shock. They hadn't spoken in years, so she couldn't be his niece. Not only that, but his brother was too young to be Noah's father. In short order, Sebastian learned the truth about his doubts. The young lady had a lot more to say about her confession. Noah said her mother became pregnant soon after the argument between her brothers. The fact that her father had made repeated attempts to get in touch with Sebastian throughout the years without success was even more startling. Sebastian was embarrassed to realize he knew the name that Toa's mother. Noah stated that she had lied to Sebastian about her financial situation because she didn't want him to worry. She felt humiliated by her present state of affairs. She had assured her father that she was capable of handling life on her own, but things hadn't turned out that way. As a result, Sebastian went into shock. There was no way he was hearing it correctly. When the truth was eventually exposed, he realized he had been wrong about his brother wanting nothing to do with him all these years. Nothing had happened when he was by himself. But was it too late? His brother certainly never wanted to see him again after all those fruitless efforts. Sebastian mustered every ounce of bravery he could to address the question he'd been avoiding. He was hoping to find out if there was even the slightest chance that he might pay his brother a visit. Noah cracked a grin and said she'd get in touch with her father. In response to this, Sebastian grinned after a brief pause in conversation. Hours passed as they caught him up on their lives over the previous several months. Noah described the difficulties she had encountered while raising her child alone. Sebastian heeded her concerns and vowed to assist her in regaining her footing. Sebastian also assured her he would be on board if she waited to tell her father. The burden of preserving the secret was too much for Noah. Nearly a couple of months after their candid discussion, on this particular day, Noah and Sebastian paid a visit to Sebastian's brother. Twenty years of Sebastian's life had led up to this moment. Sebastian and his sibling had a lengthy discussion about topics they had kept secret for a long time. After talking it over, Noah and Sebastian felt like they were back with their extended family. The events of this story are entirely fictional and are products of the author's imagination. Images included are meant for illustration purposes only. Any resemblance to actual events, places or persons, living or dead, are entirely coincidental.